In this video we will be doing a recap of the film adaptation by Alexander Dumas, a tale called The Count of Monte Cristo. The story begins in 1814, when Napoleon Bonaparte, a French emperor became exiled to the island off the coast of Italy, known as Elba. The British soldiers will shoot anyone who comes near the shore. Throughout the days when France was transferring far away from Napoleonic rule, Edmond Dantes and his friend, Fernand Mondego, moved their ship to the island of Elba after their captain fell ill with brain fever. After a fatal encounter with the island's watchman, help arrives in the form of the exiled Napoleon's personal physician. In return for using his physician, Napoleon requests that Edmund convey a letter for him and that the mission in the letter should not be known to anyone. Edmund being illiterate, he didn't know that the letter would explain to the Bonapartists in Marseille how to organize a potential salvage of Napoleon. Unknown to Edmund, Fernand found and read the letter and had full information of it. When he went back to France, Edmund was named captain by Morel of one of his boats. This upset Stanglers, the second in command of the ship who fought against going to shore. A better status in life made Edmund propose to her beloved Mercedes, who Fernand keeps failing to woo out of envy for his friend's happiness. Subsequent to uncovering his favorable luck, Fernand leaves in a peaceful trance after revealing Edmund's good fortune. Edmund and Mercedes agree to get married using a string as their wedding ring. Fernand got depressed by Edmund's ascent in status and being happy with his life. He then, after getting drunk tells Danglers about the letter, which would blame Edmund for committing treason by the norms of the French government. The local authorities took Edmund before the justice, Villefort. In spite of his evaluation about Edmund's innocence, Villefort ends up being upset after discovering that the name on the letter whom Edmund deliver is Mr. Clarion who is his father. Mr. Clarion is a blunt bonpartist and an inconvenient father for a young fellow like Villefort wanting to be a known lawyer and have a political vocation in post-Napoleonic France. Villefort burns the letter to dispose of all proof that his father was engaged with plans for Napoleon's attempt to escape from Elba. Villefort arrested Edmund and was taken to the maximum security prison called Chateau d'If. Edmund stayed there for 13 years, without any possibilities of getting out. He loses his faith in God when Dorliac, the prison's warden, beats him consistently while he was imprisoned. Edmund becomes friends with another prisoner Abby Faria, who is a professor. Faria continually educates Edmund and makes him into a wise and developed man in exchange for helping Faria dig a tunnel to get out of the prison. Faria told Edmund that back then, he was a soldier when he put a church on fire with the rebels inside, to his never-ending disgrace, Faria chose to go to religion and be a priest to make up for what he did. During his days as a soldier, Faria was responsible for Caesar Spada's treasure. Napoleon arrested Faria believing that Faria knew where the treasure was hidden, and put him in prison until he admitted where the treasure was, but Faria still denies knowledge about Spada's wealth. Finally, Edmund pieced together why Fernand and the others had betrayed him. Edmund persuades Faria to show and teach him the soldier's skills including how to use a sword. At some point, as Edmund and Faria were digging, Faria was fatally injured. He revealed that he lied about knowledge of Spada's treasure and gave Edmund a map. Before Faria died, he asks Edmund to believe in God, follow his teachings and forget about his cause for vengeance. When Faria was set to be thrown over the cliff in the ocean near the prison, Edmund hid himself in Faria's burial sack. While Edmund tries to get the keys from Dorliac, he and Dorliac are tossed into the ocean. Edmund kills Dorliac and leaves Dorliac's body in the sea before he swims away. Edmund reaches the shore a long way from Chateau d'If. He was happy at first only to find out that there were pirates and smugglers living on the shore. The leader of the group, Luigi Vampa, offers Edmund the opportunity to save his life if he wins a fight with Jacopo through knife to entertain the crew of the group after Jacopo had tried to save gold for himself rather than sharing it with the group. Edmund wins, however he saves Jacopo, persuading Vampa that both of their skills can be effectively used as opposed to just one. Jacopo vows his life to Edmund for saving him. Years after that, the group went back to Marseille where Edmund and Jacopo chose to be together for their own fortunes. Morel and Edmund meet again after more than 13 years in prison. Morel did not recognize Edmund who kept quiet about his identity. Edmund found out from Morel that Danglers took over Morel's shipping company. Edmund also learned from Morel that his father hung himself after he was sent to Chateau d'If. Villefort became the chief of prosecution after his father died mysteriously. His father's estate was inherited by Fernand after his death and Fernand married Mercedes. Edmund leaves pieces of gold for Morel to help with his finances. All of Edmund's subjects for revenge were in Paris living among the Parisian high society. Following the map that Faria gave him, Edmund and his partner Jacopo went to the island of Monte Cristo where they found an unimaginable wealth. 
Instead of living a luxurious life, Edmund's new purpose is vengeance. Fernand, Villefort, Danglars and Mercedes are the objects of his revenge. To get to them, Edmund needs to reinvent himself and use a portion of his freshly discovered wealth to buy an enormous estate close to Paris. Edmund gave himself a new name as the Count of Monte Cristo. Because no one knew him, his abundant wealth overwhelms the elite society. The Count organized a party at his estate. He invited the members of Parisian high society including every one of the objects of his revenge. Now that he has access to all of them, Edmund started setting up each of them one at a time to fail and suffer. The Count got close to Fernand and Mercedes by kidnapping their son Albert which he organized by paying the pirate leader Vampa. This gave the Count himself the chance to save their son Albert. Because he saved their child, the couple welcomed the Count in their home. Edmund starts to pressure Fernand's finances. Because he was desperate, Fernand was forced to go back to Danglars and Villefort. Albert told his father that the Count talked about gold and that the next Spada shipment will arrive soon. Fernand and Villefort thought that the Count had found Spada's treasure. Fernand Villefort and Danglars planned to snatch the treasure when it arrived and make the robbery legitimate through Villefort's legal power. To Dangler's surprise he was caught from Edmund's trap and was arrested when he tried to load off the shipment. Because of his habit of curling his hair, Mercedes believes that the Count is really Edmund Dantes, however the Count actually harbors serious disdain as she wedded Fernand soon after he was arrested and had Fernand's child Albert. Mercedes' marriage to Fernand who put Edmund away, made Edmund despise Mercedes and avoid her as much as possible even as Mercedes insisted that the Count was Edmund. The Count eventually discovers that Villefort had reported that Edmund was dead soon after the beginning of his detainment. It turns out that Fernand had anticipated this declaration, from which he expected to acquire the hand of Mercedes, because Villefort requested Fernand to kill his father. Villefort was tricked by Edmund into conceding this which was heard by the authorities and was arrested. Mercedes went to the Count's house to confront him after he accidentally revealed the information about Edmund, the Count admits that he is Edmund Dantes. He told her what happened to him and castigated Mercedes for marrying Fernand. Mercedes showed Edmund her string wedding ring as a sign of her devotion to him even years has passed. Mercedes and Edmund started to love each other again. Fernand's finances were ruined because of his gambling issues and poor business ventures that were weakened by Edmund's undetectable manipulation. Fernand planned on leaving Paris to avoid his debtors and the law because he was being accused of crimes which was revealed when Villefort confessed about it. Mercedes doesn't want to go with Fernand bringing Albert with him, she at last told Fernand about the truth that Albert is Edmund's son. Mercedes conceived Albert before Edmund was arrested. Fernand felt that his life fell apart around him, so he left Mercedes and his child. Fernand shows up at the place of the treasure where he and Villefort planned to steal. To his dismay, Fernand found an empty chest but only one chess playing piece, the king, a symbol that he and Edmund shared when they were young. The count reveals himself and tells him that he is Edmund and confronts him for his betrayal. Albert learned about the place where Fernand is going, and protected his father, thinking that the count is a two-time traitor who took Mercedes away from the family. Edmund takes steps to tell Albert that he will kill him if he intervenes with his vengeance. Mercedes shows up just in time before they finish the fight and tells them both that Edmund is Albert's real father. Stunned at both the disclosure and the way that Fernand provokes his own son to battle to death with his own father just to save Fernand's life. Fernand also took advantage of Albert who took his guard down. Fernand took the chance to threaten to shoot Albert so he could get away. Edmund begged Fernand to save his life in return for Edmund putting halt on his quest for revenge after him. Jacopo threw his knife to Fernand and was wounded. However, Fernand's gun went off and injured Mercedes all the while. As Albert, Edmund and Jacopo take care of Mercedes, Fernand rides away just to realize that it's over for him. He now has no riches, family, status, or virtue according to the law to help him. He requests Edmund to come out and invite him for a duel. Jacopo tells Edmund that standing up to Fernand is the best way to end this ordeal and that even Faria would accept. Fernand told Edmund that he could never live a happy life in a world where Edmund, the son of a clerk, had all that he wanted in his life. They get into a dangerous fight that ends up with Edmund killing Fernand. Edmund went back to Chateau d'If after buying it, telling Faria from his heart that he was correct about how hollow his way of vengeance was. It brought nothing but pain going back to a family life and God. He said that he plans to destroy the prison, just to change his perspective and hang on to it as an indication of his former life and what it serves as. Mercedes, Albert and Jacopo made a trip with Edmund and he vows to do a good job for them as they all left the island together. Thank you for watching movie recap. 
Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share and turn on the notification bell for more videos like this.